Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. I'm John Dickerson. We've got a lot to get to, so we're going to begin with Vice President Mike Pence. Mr. Pence, Mr. Vice President, thank you very much for being with us. <laughs> Good morning, Getting John. used to that. Good morning, John. <laughs> Let's start with the executive order on immigration. A federal judge has now blocked it. There has been criticism even from Republicans who like the policy, just don't like the rollout. Is it time to start over? It's not time to start over at all. Uh, during the course of the campaign and since the outset of this administration, President Trump has made it clear he's going to use his authority as president under the law to put the safety and security of the American people first, especially when it comes to protecting this country from the threat uh, that, that uh, radical Islamic terrorism poses to our families and our communities. The executive order is on a solid constitutional uh, and statutory foundation. Uh, one, one court in Boston uh, confirmed that. Another court in Washington uh, came to a different decision. But we're very confident that uh, as we move through the process of these appeals that the president's authority in this area will be upheld uh, and uh, will we'll continue to take such actions as are necessary to put the safety and security me, of the American people first. Let me ask you about that judge, the federal judge in Washington. The president referred to him as a, quote, so-called judge. And the president can criticize anybody he wants. Criticism is one thing. In this instance, the big distinction is the president of the United States is calling into question the legitimacy of the judge and whether he has a legitimate role to make the decision he made. Is it right for the president to question the legitimacy of this judge? Not the ruling, not the opinion, not the policy, but the legitimacy. Uh, every president has a right to be critical of the other branches of the federal government. As you noted, the, the simple fact is I think the American people uh, welcome uh, the candor of this president. And, and the president and our whole administration, frankly, are frustrated because the law could not be more clear here, John. Not only his constitutional authority to conduct foreign policy for this country, but clear statutory authority in federal law today gives the president the ability to determine who is given access to this country and who is not. And in this case, the president used a list the Obama administration and the Congress identified of seven countries compromised by terrorism. It's within his authority to do it. And it's just frustrating to see a, a federal judge in Washington state conducting American foreign policy or making well, decisions about our national security. But, but I want to go back to this word legitimacy because that's different than just having a difference of opinion. And, and the reason I bring this up is this president has been very sensitive to anyone who would question his legitimacy. Last time you were here, you and I talked about Congressman John Lewis questioning the president's legitimacy. And you said, really, it was out of line for John Lewis, somebody of his stature, to question the legitimacy of the president. So why is it in line? for a president to question the legitimacy of a judge and what a judge is doing. John, I, I don't think he was questioning the legitimacy of the well, judge. Well, when he calls him a so-called judge, how do you interpret as that? As, the, as soon as that order came out, the Department of Homeland Security fully complied with yeah. it. We went to the courts to seek a stay. We're going to, the first of this week, go to the, the Court of Appeals to not only get the stay, but to win on the merits. And we're confident that we will win in the interest of the security of the American people. Right. This President's was more, this was to... more, I know, John, but this was more about the president simply expressing a frustration with a judge who is involving that. himself in the clear prerogatives of the president of the United but States. But it's just when the president speaks, his words, his words matter. And I guess the reason also is when I talked to the president, then he was just a candidate in January of 2016, he talked about the President Obama's executive order on immigration. And he said this to me, quote, the courts actually took the step and did something that was very surprising and they did the right thing, which is to say the courts stepped in and stopped President Obama's executive order on immigration. So if it was good when they stopped President Obama, how can it not be legitimate for them to step in and pause in this instance? I, I, think, it's, I think it's a great comparison, John. It's a very fair one on your part as usual. In that case, President Obama was clearly taking action that was within the purview of the legislative branch. Congress had not acted in that regard, and so he attempted to use executive authority to implement laws the Congress had not passed. The president's executive order that, this, that the judge in Washington state uh, uh, ex you know, issued, you know, issued an order upending is is fully consistent with statutory law that's been passed by the Congress of the United States of America. Let me ask so the comparison Congress. here, I think, is dramatic. It's consistent. And that's why we're very right. confident in the interest of the national security and the safety of the American people, we're going to prevail in court. That you'll win in court. Let me ask you about Congress. I've talked to a lot of Republicans this week, again, who are on your side on the policy. But they and people I talked to in the administration, in addition to American allies, there's been a lot of criticism of this 
executive order and the way it was carried out. What, any of those criticisms valid? Well, at the outset of an administration that is as busy keeping our promises to the American people as this one, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll concede that sometimes the usual Washington niceties of informing members of Congress were not, you know, fully, fully implemented as they've been in the past. But I have to tell you, the, the American people, I think, are grateful to see from literally the day of the inauguration that we have in President Trump a leader who's been taking steps every day to get this economy moving, to put the safety and security of the American people first, to, to roll back the kind of regulations that are stifling economic growth. And on this immigration issue, uh, the president was determined, working with the Justice Department, uh, working with the Department of Homeland Security, to take executive action that would suspend immigration from countries that we know are compromised by terror. It was the right thing to do. The American people welcome it. And, and I truly do believe, I truly do believe as we go forward, uh, we'll see the legal foundation of that affirmed by our highest courts. Would, con would Congressman Mike Pence have thought these were niceties? Let me move on to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to play a clip for you of an interview that the president did with Fox's uh, Bill O'Reilly that'll appear during the Super Bowl and get your reaction to it. Do you respect Putin? I do respect him. Do you? But Why? I, well, I respect a lot of people, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get along with him. He's a leader of his country. Uh, I say it's better to get along with Russia than not. And if Russia helps us in the fight against ISIS, which is a major fight, and Islamic terrorism all over the world, right. major fight, that's a good thing. Will I get along with him? I have no idea. It's very He's a possible killer, I though. Won't. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. You get a lot of killers. Why well, you think our country's so innocent? Country's so innocent. Do you agree? This is a this is an enormously important moment uh, in in the life of our our nation on the world stage because we now have a president who is re-engaging a world from which America has been stepping back over the last eight years. I mean, I've, I've been talking to my counterparts in other countries. I'll be traveling to the Munich Security Council in just a couple of weeks. What I consistently hear from counterparts around the world is how much they welcome the fact that President Trump is re-engaging on behalf of America's interests, leaders around the world. And what you heard in that quote was a commitment to explore the possibility of starting anew and looking for common cause with Russia and with President Putin. Now, you also heard skepticism there. The president said it'd be better if we got along with Russia. Maybe me, we won't, but he's me, absolutely make good... determined, and he told the American people this in the campaign, he's absolutely determined to explore ways, particularly in confronting and destroying you, ISIS, to work with you, Russia, and, and that's when, the spirit of those comments. When you, when you re-engage the world, you have to do it with a moral voice. And he suggested there, I'll quote from Brent Stevens, who's on the Wall Street Journal editorial page, who tweeted, President Trump puts the United States on moral par with Putin's Russia. Never in history has a president slandered his country like this. A president speaks with a moral voice when he's reengaging the country. He suggested that America was on the equivalent par with somebody who was a killer. I, I simply don't accept that there was any moral equivalency in the president's comments. Look, uh, uh, President Trump uh, uh, throughout his life, uh, his campaign, and in this administration has never hesitated to be critical of government policies by the United States in the past, but there was no moral equivalency. What you heard there was a determination to, to, to attempt to deal with the world as it is, to start afresh with Putin and to start afresh with Russia. Look, we face very, very serious dangers in the world. But that's and, and why the, the United States in many ways has created a vacuum in the I world understand. as we've backed away from the world stage. But, but, what but the American is, people see is President Trump leaning into these relationships, bringing a healthy skepticism to all of it, particularly when it comes to Russia, but saying, look, but, uh, if we could have a better relationship with Russia and with Putin and not, not, getting, yes, but, not getting lost in the usual debates, but, me, but to say we're, we're going to take an honest effort but Mr. Vice to, President, to advance America's interests in the peace and security of the world. But this is a new debate. This is not an old debate. No one has compared the United States to a killer in, in Vladimir Putin. And this is not the first time that the president has done this when he was a, was a candidate on MSNBC. He was asked whether it was wrong for Russia to kill journalists. And he said, quote, I think our country does plenty of killing also. When President Barack Obama was in office, he was criticized consistently by conservatives for not praising American exceptionalism. He never said anything on this par, did he? 
What I can tell you is there was no moral equivalency in what the president was saying. He was simply acknowledging that, that he has been throughout his life willing to be critical of government policies and, and government actions in the United States. But we recognize, we recognize the extraordinary superiority of the ideals of the American people and the implementation of those ideals. But do you, what do you, you think have, America is morally superior to Russia? What, what you have in this new president is someone who is willing to and is in fact engaging the world, including Russia, okay. and saying, where, where can we find common interests that will advance the security of the American people, the peace and prosperity of the world, and he's determined to come at that right. in a new and renewed way. But America morally superior to Russia, yes or no? I believe that the ideals that America has stood for throughout our history represent the highest ideals of, of so humankind. Yes. I was actually at, I got, I was at Independence Hall yesterday and, and I, I stood in the very room where the Constitution of the United States was crafted, the very building where the Declaration of Independence I, was held forth. Every American, including our president, represents that I, we, we uphold just the yes highest answer? ideals of the world. Shouldn't we be able to just say yes to that question, though? I, I, think, I think it's without question. John, that America is morally superior to Russia. American ideals uh, are, are superior to countries all across the world. Okay. But again, what the president is determined to do, someone who, is, who has spent a lifetime looking for deals, mm -hmm. is to see if we can have a new relationship with Russia and other countries that advances the interests of America first right. and the peace and security of the world. I've held you over your time, Mr. Mr. Vice President. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, John.